Today, I'd like to talk about Price's Law. Price's Law was developed by uh, De Sola Price as an empirical relation to talk about the productivity of scientists. And he, he basically observed that if you had a list of papers on, on a topic, and that could be you know, lithium air batteries or, or what have you, and you, you know, have a list of those, and then you take all the authors and you make a list of the authors, and there are you know, N authors. He observed that approximately a square root of N authors produce half of the papers in the list. So for example, you have some subject and you know, there is 100 uh, different authors that have contributed to that body of knowledge. Then approximately square root of 100 or 10 authors contributed half of the publications. And this observation, uh, it's you know, been debated in the literature and I don't want to talk about the validity of it because I, I think that there's still you know, open questions, but let's just assume that that is true. And I think that in, in many cases it is. What I'd like to talk about today is the attempt to generalize that to other aspects of life and, and even other aspects of science, not just the publication count. And I'm talking about this because there's been a, a video and it was made a couple of years ago uh, and posted by uh, Professor Jordan Peterson from uh, University of Toronto. Uh, he's a psychologist and is fairly well known right now. And in this video, he was lecturing to his class and he was you know, explaining uh, Price's Law and then he went on to say, you know, and so it goes for you know, everything else. And he gave the example of classical music, saying that if you look at you know, the lists of classical music, only square root of n of the musicians contributed to most of the music we heard. And then he went on to further generalize it and talk about companies. And he said, well, this is the reason that you know, companies start to fail as they get bigger because you start out with say, you know, 10 employees and half of the work is being done by square root of 10 or like 3.2 people. And as you get larger and larger, then a smaller number of people are doing half the work. And, and you know, when I saw this video, you know, I was you know, pretty down. It was like, well, geez, what, what's the chance I'm gonna be one of those square root of N people in a field? Um, and then as I thought about it more, I started realizing that there are some problems with this. And today I'd like to talk about those problems. Um, and I'll put a link to uh, Dr. Peterson's uh, video uh, down in, in, the, uh, in the comments. Um, I should say, I, I mostly like what Dr. Peterson has to say, but there are a few topics we disagree and, and this is, is one of them. So, as I see it, there are really two significant problems with the generalization of Price's Law. Uh, the first has to do with uh, scaling and the fact that um, the work done by the uh, productive subsection and the other subsection of, of people are, are coupled together. And, and the second is that I think the definition of work needs to be examined. Uh, in the case of uh, Price's Law, talking about the distribution of publications, it's, it's well-defined. And I think that, as I said, in many cases that observation is, is valid but uh, generalizing it, the definition of work needs to be reconsidered. So first, let's talk about scaling. And I was thinking to myself, you know, okay, so there's this issue of, of uh, scaling. And as you go to larger size systems, you're going to have fewer people doing a larger fraction of the work. And then I thought to myself, okay, do I want to be in an army 
of 10 people or an army of 10,000 people. And so I want to be in the army of 10,000 people. And, and the reason is that they're going to be much more effective, even though you say, well, it's less equitable because, you know, square root of 10,000 people are, you know, doing half of the, you know, the work or the killing or whatever it is an army does. And uh, that started to make me think about, you know, what is it that happens as you scale? Well, as you scale, the number of people participating increases. And to a certain extent, you're going to see an increase in productivity, even though, uh, even though you have perhaps a, a less equitable distribution of work. Uh, you know, for example, going back to an army, you know, it would be good to be an army where some of the people are carrying flamethrowers and some of the people are carrying, you know, rocket propelled grenades and some of the people are carrying, you know, heavy machine guns and light machine guns and infantry and having this wide range of capabilities. And that's something that uh, as you scale, it increases. And uh, the person carrying a flamethrower, they may not be doing half of the killing, but when you need a person with a flamethrower, they're, they're good to have. Uh, and I was thinking about that. And then I was thinking about how we would think about this uh, mathematically. So I've, I've got a little derivation up here that I, I, want, to, uh, I want to share with you. Okay, so imagine we have uh, a company, we're going to call it company A, is a small company, it has 10 people. Well, that means that square root of 10, or approximately 3.2, are you know, the productive subset that do half the work. And that means that 10 minus 3.2, or 6.8 of the people, are not in that productive subset. They're the other, the other uh, fraction. Well, we have to you know, define what's being done. So let's say that this company does 10 work items a day. And I don't know if that, that's production. As I said, the, the definition of work is, is a little bit uh, nebulous. But it says 10 work items per day. Well, then that means that 10 over 2 of those works per day are done by the 3.2 productive people. Meaning that each productive person does 1.56 work per day per productive person. Now, that means that the other half of the work, 10 over 2, is done by the 6.8 of the other people, meaning that each of those other people does 0.71 work per day per other person. And that's, that's a way to, to break down what's happening in terms of the, the units and the uh, activities. Now, imagine, though, that we have another company. We have company B. Now company B is 10 times the size. It has 100 people, meaning that square root of 100 or 10 are the productive people. And 100 minus 10 or 90 are the other people. Now I don't know how much work this company does. Um, so I said, well, let's just say it has does X units of work per day. Well, then that means that x over 2 divided by 10 is the work per day per productive person, or x over 20. And the other people perform x over 2 over 90 work per day of other people. So that's x over 180. And this is, is how we should see the scaling. Now, uh, what can we say about x? Well. Let's work from a couple hypotheses and then look at the range. So hypothesis one, let's say that the productive people are really the rate limiting factor, meaning that in company A, that 1.65 is the, the maximum. Well, what that means is that going back to company B, we have X over 20. So we know now that X means that we have 31.2 units of work per day being produced by the uh, company on the whole, and that X over 20 is the amount being made, uh, work being made per day by the productive people. Then going to the other people, well, we know that 
x over 180 is the work per day per other person, which means those other people do 0.17 work per day per other person. So then in this limit, where the productive people are the limit, we have, uh, you know, increasing the number of employees by an order of magnitude increases the productivity by a factor of three, or the amount of work being produced per day by a factor of three. And you see a fairly significant drop off in the work per day of other people. Now, let's take another hypothesis. Let's say that what if the other people are controlling productivity, meaning that this 0.74 work per day per other person is the limiting factor. Well, that means that then we can solve for X and we find that the company is actually producing 133.2 work per day. So we have a, a super linear scaling if these other people are the limiting factor. And if those other people are the limiting factor, then that means that the productive people are doing a 133.2 divided by 20 or 6.66 work per day per productive person. And that's, that's fairly different from hypothesis one. Um, and again, it's super linear scaling here. So we actually get more work as we scale. And lastly, we can make the assumption of, of linear scaling. So let's say that X we know is 100 work per day because we increase the number of employees by one order of magnitude. Well, then that means that the uh, productive people are doing X over 20 or five work per day per productive person. And the uh, other people are doing 100 per 180 or 0 0.56 work per day per other person. So the implications of this first is that there's actually a, a fairly a wide range of, of possible outcomes as we see the company scale, depending on, on where the uh, limits are to productivity. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, as you increase employees, they're actually going to be facilitating the more creative elements. And you know, in you know, my career, I've worked at, you know, or five, six different universities. And I can tell you that going from one university to the next, seeing changes in the support staff and the administrative structures, you see an overall change in the productivity of the faculty. So uh, these are tied together. And that's also something that you should see from this is that the production of the other people and the production of the productive people are are tied they're they're, they're not they're not um, they're not independent of each other so it's not really fair to say that you know, 50 percent of the work is going to be done by square root of n people therefore a company is going to fail as it gets larger uh, in many cases it actually may be more successful as it gets larger depending on uh, how the uh, administration handles the management. And there's a lot of factors that come into play. The second argument I'd like to make about Price's Law has to do with the definition of work. Now, if the definition of work is the number of papers produced, then Price's Law, I, I think, is reasonable. But in the Jordan Peterson lecture, he was talking about music, and he was saying that, you know, classical music, you know, we only hear, you know, square root of n of the songs, and that's because those are only the ones that were successful. And I think that if we just think even about modern music, um, we would disagree with that. So, you know, if you think about bands such as, you know, the Beach Boys or, or the Beatles, you know, that seems to obey Price's Law. They were you know, both groups that were extremely uh, prolific. They, they wrote lots of music. They had you know, a significant influence in the evolution of, of rock and roll. But there's counterexamples. Uh, there are bands such as Nirvana uh, or Radiohead that were extremely influential 
but they are not producing half of the music. Nirvana only produced two albums. Uh, Radiohead has produced like nine or ten, but it, if you look at it, there's a wide variability in the type of, of rock and roll they were producing. Right, OK Computer was monumental for changing alternative uh, rock. Um, and following that, they had uh, Kid A, which was experimental rock, and that was just very different. So I think that we're missing, we're missing the idea of impact. And I think that that's something that is uh, a problem when we try to generalize uh, arguments such as as Price's Law. Price's Law is, is a good measurement if the only thing you have is volume. And it's worth pointing out that uh, talking about platforms such as, as Steemit, and I've been very interested in, in watching this uh, blogging platform evolve, uh, the volume of production is not necessarily a, a measurement of the impact. And as I've, I've said in, in previous videos, you know, 90, 95% of, of what goes in or come, goes on to the Steema site is, you know, is sheer garbage. Uh, and it's going to be sorted through at some point through curation and uh, bots and AI. But uh, the idea of, of impact, I think, is, is significant. And I don't think there's necessarily a way to measure that. Um, not, not in a way that is, is unbiased. So that's, that's my thoughts on, on Price's Law. Um, thank you very much for, for taking the time to uh, listen.